Okay. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sudi Madison, and I have Tourette syndrome. I was uh, diagnosed at the age of 13, although I began twitching when I was about, uh, I think, about eight years old. And my first tics were uh, eye, like little eye blinks and little sniffing sounds, if I can remember clearly, <clears throat> and I think throat clearing. And uh, they developed quite dramatically over the years. And I carry it through into adulthood, <laughs> uh, which uh, only a very few percentage of people that have Tourette's, uh, a much fewer percentage of them actually do carry it through into, into adulthood. And I happen to be one of the fortunate ones. Of course, <laughs> I say that with a bit of a touch of um, sarcasm because uh, having Tourette's is, can be, is both a blessing and a curse, but uh, a lot of the time it does feel like the latter. It's very difficult to live with and it is often very much um, a challenge for me and others around me that have to coexist with me. It's a, a burden. It's a burden to live with. And sometimes I, I find that I take it I take it for granted, in fact, uh, because it just becomes such a part of my of my daily routine that I, that I, I stop, I, I forget to stop and think, you know, take it easy on yourself because you're dealing with something that most people aren't dealing with. Uh, so just, don't push yourself too hard. It's okay if you don't get the dishes done as quickly as someone who doesn't have Tourette's because it takes me like three to five times longer to complete a simple task, you know, that, than it would a person that doesn't have Tourette's because I have to stop and tick maybe 50 to 100 times during that 30 minute task. And if you do the math, that's gonna slow you down. <laughs> so that, that right there is one thing that makes it a lot harder um, just to function in daily living, in the minutia of life. Having Tourette's makes living a little harder. <laughs> Uh, and that's an understatement. <laughs> Having Tourette's can make living a lot harder. <laughs> Everything from dishes to laundry to pumping gas to uh, having relationships to trying to find a job to having an interview for that job to trying to, to, uh, to be on a plane uh, to, uh, let's see, <laughs> trying to take a visit to the library. Oh, that's never any fun. Try to play hide-and-seek hide having Tourette's. Uh, well, that's just not gonna happen, actually. Uh, you're gonna lose every time. Uh, <laughs> um, it's an interesting life for those of us who are afflicted with Tourette syndrome. But we're not a glum crowd of people. There's many, there's many uh, wonderful attributes as well. Uh, for example, one of the things I find to be um, a blessing having Tourette's as, 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 a, as a, that I think is, that I think is a blessing is that it's given me, it's given me the gift of both humility and certainly compassion to my fellow man. Um, when I see others who are disabled and and I I reach out I reach out quicker than maybe someone who isn't uh, and to, and to me <laughs> hold on uh, sorry why should I be apologizing this is about Tourette's um <laughs> To me, being
being compassionate to someone else who who is in need and who is hurting is is one of the best things that we can do as human beings. It is one of the best attributes and qualities um, that one that one can aspire to obtain in one's lifetime. Bottom line, uh, whether you realize it now or not, uh, it, it is the greatest gift that we can get in a lifetime is the gift of giving. And although that does sound corny, uh, there's a whole lot of truth behind it. And it took me many years to come to that place. I mean, I realize I'm not old and wise, you know, yet, but I'm also not, I'm not a spring chicken either. I'm, I'm 33 years old. So I've been around long enough that I, I I've definitely, I've learned that giving is the way to happiness. Let's put it that way. Um, and I, I don't think I felt that way as much in my, in my earlier twenties, not putting down being in your early twenties. It's a very important time in one's life. Okay. Now I'm overthinking again. See, I think another one of the, the points, uh, I think another thing about having Tourette's <laughs> is that <laughs> it comes with a slew of other disorders, uh, like, attention deficit disorder. As you can see, I'm, I'm sort of rambling. I'm going off on all these different tangents. Um, another one is obsessive compulsive disorder. I obsess about crazy. It's crazy making the things that I think about and then overthink about and then overthink about is unhealthy. It's, um, it's, uh, energy, energy draining and, uh, it's almost worse than, than the ticks themselves. You know, the things that, that I allow to, the, the thoughts that hijack my mind, it, it's, uh, it's devastating. It's devastating to me. Um, and it's not, I, I don't OCD in a way where like I, I count, I count things or like I, um, I tap on things or I have to wash my hands. It, it's not that type of OCD for me. For me, my OCD is completely revolved around things that are important to me in my life. And I will just, I become captivated with something, whether it be a person, like a relationship, or an artistic endeavor. And everything becomes, it becomes everything. And I, it's all encompassing. And I can't, I can't stop thinking about it. It's, I can't, everything, it's, it's become the most important paramount thing in my life um, to the point where it's unhealthy and I don't think about anything else. And so the rest of my life becomes off kilter. Um, and that's unhealthy. And that's how my OCD plays out. And I have been diagnosed with having it. So it doesn't have to be counting and tapping things in order to have OCD. Um, it can just be a matter of the way that you think and process things. Um, I certainly have that along with the ADD and the Tourette's. In fact, most people that have Tourette's do have the other two things. So they look at it almost like it's a triangle. Huh? Uh, what else? <laughs> I was trying to tell you another good thing about having Tourette's and that is that when you do find that, that thing that you feel very passionate about, um, whether it be an artistic, you know, endeavor, um, or, you know, a sport or <laughs> something that you're studying or whatever it is, um, a career path that people with Tourette's because the way that, that our brains are wired, we're able, we're able to really, at times, really hyper-focus on something. Hence, the OCD can be... <laughs> that's sort of the positive benefit of having the OCD. It can, when you're not busy, excuse me, busy focusing that, the energy in a negative way, if you find a way to focus it in a positive, creative way, it can work wonders and it can work for you beautifully. Um, 
case in point, I, I started my own dance theater uh, performance troupe sev several years ago um, called Band of Artists. And Band of Artists uh, stemmed from my need to want to express my disorder, Tourette's. <laughs> so uh, I, I decided to, to gather up a group of dancers because the thing about Tourette's is it's very kinetic, it's very physical, it's like movement. And, um, and so I thought, uh, well, actually a professor of mine influenced me and, and planted a seed in my mind and, and, and sort of gave me the idea to start uh, a dance company. And he said, you know, why don't you try to teach some actual modern dancers some of these ticks? some of these ticks of Tourette's and see if they can turn them into new dance moves and maybe maybe create like a dance piece out of it. And being an, the artist that I am, I said, that's a really cool idea. I think I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And I ran with it. So within six months, <laughs> I focused all of my energy into that, all of it. I went full, bl full blast. I dove head in, put all of my energy into that. And then see, that's the good part of Tourette's because when you want to, you can go for something 110%. And there's something about that brain chemistry that allows you to do that when you have Tourette's. Like you can just hyper-focus and that's a benefit. Um, and within six months, I had hired, I think like six dancers, six modern dancers. I gathered them together. I taught them about Tourette's. I showed them videos. We did research. I taught them my tics. We t put together a Tourette's dance that was all based off of the movements of Tourette's, different people's tics and sounds and movements. Um, I got a musician to, to create the, the uh, compose music to it. And we rented a theater. We promoted it. We um, were on the radio. We were on NB NPR, promoted our show. And presto <laughs> we put on a show and we had a lovely turnout and there you have it I started a dance company and <laughs> it was like magic and people responded and, and they saw our show and they loved it and 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 here we were presenting and educating people about Tourette's through dance and performance and it was, it was like this, it was, uh, it was like uh, this divine moment. And I knew that it wasn't just, it wasn't just me. I knew that there was a higher power involved in that. It wasn't just me. It was God moving through me as well. Um, and it, it changed my entire life. It changed my entire life. And ever since then, Band of Artists still exists, and we still uh, create works of art, and we still dance, and we're still creating work about Tourette's. And now we've actually been evolving, and we're creating work about obsessive compulsive disorder, which is uh, a related associated disorder. So um, <clears throat> talk about doing something positive <laughs> with uh, what at one point I only saw as being a disadvantage, you know, <laughs> I only saw as being a burden and I took that burden and I turned it into something life-changing, magical, educational, and beautiful. And I showed it to the world and the world responded in such a way that I could have never, I would have better than I'd hoped for. <laughs> it was, it was brilliant. Um, we touched so many lives and we, we, uh, we're so fortunate. We're so grateful. Uh, Band of Artists has been very lucky and because what we were doing was so, I guess, unique and also brave to put ourselves out there like that and say, yes, you know, I do have this disorder and I'm willing to be honest about it and just and, and put it out there and not hide away. 
that I think that um, <laughs> I think that the that the media took attention to it, and so we were in a, a couple of newspapers and uh, and PBS did um, a short documentary on us and and. and um, we got sponsored by Arcadia University to come to a show there. And so, you know, <laughs> we received a lot of wonderful attention very early on because um, I think because it gave people pause. You know, the work that we were doing was truly uh, encouraging and inspiring to young and old people alike, to educators, to students, to doctors, to philosophers, to other people with Tourette's. It was inspiring to artists. I mean, really, it sort of ran the gamut. It, it, it really bridged the gap, you know, between science and art. And, and it brought it all together, you know, and that's what Band of Artists work intends to do. Through art and science, teach people educate people, and at the same time, for lack of a better term, entertain them, uh, mystify them, <laughs> and, and teach them about Tourette Syndrome. And, uh, and uh, what else is there to say? Uh, I guess Another thing that's very difficult, of course, is just being around other people and having to like twitch, you know, and knowing that it hurts their ears when I bark and, and my, you know, people say, ah, oh, Sudi, you know, can you do that quieter? Can you just, I know, I know how hard it is for them when I do it really loud and they, it's very loud and it's very disturbing. So they asked me, oh, that really hurt. And the weird thing is, is that when they say that, it makes me want to do it again. And it's like, I'm not a malice person, but <laughs> for some reason when they, when they say that, it's like a weird head game. It's like, oh, it makes me want to do it again. So I'm like, huh, huh. I kind of quietly do it again. It's almost like a weird rebellious thing. It's like, I, it's a deviant disorder. I don't know what it is about that, but uh, it's part of the whole brain chemistry part of it. Uh, it's a very intricate disorder. And um, I think uh, I think is it important that that uh, that we tell people that we have it? Absolutely. I think to keep it under the radar and sweep it under the rug and act like uh, ignore people that have it or ignore it and pretend it's like it's like the pink elephant in the room. I think that it's absolutely ridiculous. I just, I don't, I personally, that's not my MO. I mean, clearly I went out of my way to create a whole performance company, you know, that goes out of their way to make it very obvious and clear that this does exist and we're not going away. So let's celebrate it. Let's do something about it. You know, let's bring out the beautiful side of it, you know, uh, because there is one. So to ignore it and shun it and wish it away and see it as only being ugly, that's not the way to go. So no, should we tell people about it? Absolutely. The more honest and comfortable we are with ourselves, especially as women with Tourette's, the more attractive we're going to be. And especially to all the ladies out there that are looking to, to date. Uh, and I know how hard it is to date when you have Tourette's. Um, it can be very difficult because a lot of guys can be superficial about stuff like that. But in truth, there's a lot of really cool down to earth guys out there that actually really don't care. And I've had plenty of, well, not, I don't want to make it seem like a lot, but <laughs> I've, I've dated plenty of guys who really, a lot of them were perfectly okay with it. And um, actually even thought that it was really cool. The last boyfriend I dated actually met me at my show that I put on about Tourette's. Um, it turns out he actually 
had Tourette's himself when he was younger. He kind of grew out of it, but maybe that's part of the reason why he was so drawn to me. Um, but there's no reason to be ashamed of it. Um, and the men who, uh, who matter won't mind. And the men who mind don't matter. So just remember that. <laughs> and, uh, I guess, uh, I guess that's really all I have for right now. Uh, so I hope that there's something you can, uh, use from this. And I'm so happy that I got to be a part of this video. And I, I encourage everyone to check out my website, um, bandofartists.org. And please feel free to look around. And I hope that some of you can make it out to a show sometime. It'd be great. And I'm so glad that, you know, that you're making this video, Ruthie. I think it's really cool. And I'm so glad I finally made this video. I hope that you can use it somehow to help educate people like I am. Um, so I'm so glad I was able to pull it together at the last minute, at the 11th hour. See? My ADD. Exhibit A. <laughs> um... Hopefully we can meet in person sometime. And um, best of luck to you. All right. Take care.